Hey guys, we were talking about Sam Harris's classic, Waking Up. Um, there was a subtitle that I was hiding, A Guide to Spirituality Without Religion. Uh, this book was gifted to me um, by a good, good friend of mine um, about five years ago now. I believe it was in, in 2016. Um, I was, this was perfect for me. I was Mr. Uh, spiritual, not religious guy. And uh, hadn't heard of Sam Harris. I'd maybe heard of him, but never listened to him or read any of his work. Um, and my uh, my buddy lent this to me, and I kept it. <laughs> um, and I remember reading it and really enjoying it. And it really, honestly, uh, ironically, got me, uh, got me started in thinking more for myself, I guess is the best way to put it. I'm from Portland. It's a very uh, monocultural city, uh, or at least it seems that way, um, where everyone seems to, it's almost assumed that everyone's going to have the same opinions, uh, politically, socially, what have you, um, and everyone's going to just kind of be in agreement. Um, and this book was the, even though it seems to be perfectly in line with a very, very uh, typical Portlander ideal. Um, this got me on the path to just kind of thinking more for myself and uh, becoming a little more heterodox uh, compared to friends and family. Um, and uh, so I'm going to go through a little bit. You can see I've got some, geez, you guys aren't really showing the camera. I've got some uh, uh, tabs where, where I put, took some notes. I have a bookmark still. I haven't opened this in years. I have a bookmark still uh, about halfway through the book, um, and uh, so maybe I never finished it, um, but with all the hours I put into listening to his podcast, um, I, I consume plenty of Sam Harris material. Um, so I'm going to just talk about Sam Harris a bit, what I've learned, and um, some key things that we can, we can talk about. Um, you know, here on page four for waking up, it says, uh, oh boy, certain euphoria was creeping into these reflections, perhaps, but the general feeling remained one of absolute sobriety and of moral and emotional clarity unlike any I'd ever known. It would not be too strong to say that I'd felt sane for the first time in my life. Ah, uh, yeah, so he's talking about the time, uh, I believe he took, took ecstasy and really felt like he could love this person in front of him. Uh, he wanted him to be happy. He felt this euphoric, universal kind of love, um, and it was focused on his friend. Um, I was no longer anxious, self-critical, guarded by irony, in competition, avoiding embarrassment, ruminating about the past and future, or making any other gesture of thought or attention that separated me from him. I was no longer watching myself through another person's eyes. I can relate to that a ton because I was always watching myself through other people's eyes. I was so self-conscious all throughout high school and college. I'm, I'm now 10 years out of college, um, pretty much. Um, and uh, that's, a, that's a hell, for sure. Yeah, I don't have to tell, tell you guys. Um, it's, it's, it's not fun. And uh, having that kind of breakthrough through drug use, I, I've experienced that. And, uh, and so did Sam here, um, and what a relief. And if only we could have that insight and that, that euphoria more often. Um, he goes on, here's page eight. Spiritually mu spirituality must be distinguished from religion because people of every faith and of none have had the same sorts of spiritual experiences. While these states of mind are usually interpreted through the lens of one or another religious doctrine. We know that this is a mistake. Nothing that a Christian, a Muslim, and a Hindu can experience, such as self-transcending love, ecstasy, bliss, inner light, constitutes evidence in support of their traditional beliefs because their beliefs are logically incompatible with one another. A deeper principle must be at work. That is, wow. Okay, so Jesus follower here. When I first read this, I was not. I am now have not read this in a while. This is super fascinating. For the most part, I disagree and I agree. Spirituality must be distinguished from religion. 
yeah, I can, I can, I can get on board with that. Again, these terms need to be a little defined. Maybe he does that earlier on, um, and I'm, I'm just missing it. But he's right to say that people of every faith and of none have had the same sorts of spiritual experiences, and they'll explain those experiences in all sorts of different ways. Hundred um, percent. And and I agree. No, nothing about these feelings, nothing about these experiences, like he talks about self-transcending love, ecstasy, bliss. None of those things um, legitimize a truth claim, right? Uh, Christianity isn't true or false depending on a person's feelings, a person's state of mind. And I don't know many Christian thinkers that would espouse that. I, I can't speak for uh, Muslims or Hindus. He says, nothing that a Christian, a Muslim, and a Hindu can experience constitutes evidence in support of their traditional beliefs. 100%. That, that's not, it's not evidence. It could be a psychological anything. Um, our feelings do not, uh, do not legitimize one's faith. Um, so 100%, a deeper principle must be at work. Yes, I agree with that. A deeper principle must be at work. Uh, and different people, different Christians, would have different, I think, explanations of what that deeper principle would be. Um, now, it's interesting, he says, their beliefs, and again, he's talking about Christian, Muslim, and Hindu, their beliefs are logically incompatible with one another. That is, now, so here's what's fascinating about Sam. He'll say things and he'll write about things, a guide to spirituality without religion, that many people um, who are more progressive, more uh, more you know, post-Christian, post-religion, m- might might be in favor for and might uh, enjoy and, 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 and go out and purchase, right? Um, and, and consume and, and, and you know, but but then they'll say things that that are are incompatible with 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 certain viewpoints that these same people who are more progressive might have. Saying that the beliefs, Christian, Muslim, and Hindu, these beliefs are logically incompatible with one another, that is, that's a kind of nowadays a bold, a bit of a bold statement. Um, Ten years ago, for me, for example, I was all about how, you know what, there's all these religions, but they're all really saying the same thing. They're all really, it's, it, at the heart, they're all the same. It's all about love, you know. Um, that was really convenient for me to say um, and really nice. I, I thought it were, was nice of me to say. It, 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 it reinforced certain beliefs I had about the world. Um, you know, just see the similarities. The differences are superficial. I mean, there are similarities among all a lot of these religions, Christianity, Islam, and and uh, Hindu, um, there's a lot of similarities, but there are a lot of differences too. We know we know that's just a fact. And he here says that they're logically incompatible with one, one another. Um, a deeper principle must be a work. You almost can't. In, in in some ways, you can't. It can be that that can be a controversial statement saying that they're incompatible with one another right because if they're incompatible well and they're making different truth claims they're making different claims about how the world functions how humans are to function in the world um that could be cause for conflict and he's saying if they're not if they're they're incompatible with one another then you know if if three different people are making a truth claim and they're all incompatible with one another. That would that would then I think logically uh, you'd have to conclude well okay either one is right and the others are wrong, all or all of them are wrong. Um, but none of them can all be right, and that can be that can get dicey in this in this world. So I'm gonna leave it at that for now. Um, we're almost at ten minutes. I don't want to. Uh, uh, go off on on other tangents here but uh, if you haven't read this um pick it up it's a great one if you haven't listened to sam harris podcast 
It used to be called Waking Up with Sam Harris, I believe. Now it's called the Making Sense Podcast, I believe. He's been uh, found truly foundational for me in in um, in how I viewed the world. Not so much anymore. Uh, he doesn't, but but he's he's been super influential for me as a thinker and just trying to think logically and 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 speak and, and converse with people in a logical manner. More on that um, next time. I, I hope to kind of venture into Sam's work again. Um, but we're already at ten minutes, and um, I don't want to. I don't want to take forever to draw on a bunch of different topics here. We'll leave it at that. And uh, comment. Let me know what you think. Have you uh, Have you read his work? Have you listened to his podcast? Do you Do you like it? So I know a lot of people. He He's mentioned himself. His audience. He's got a lot of people that uh, love the things he's talking about on a certain topic, and just as many people who hate the things he's talking about or his takes. Uh, on the same topic. So every which way, he's kind of getting love and hate um, for uh, for every particular uh, take he has on a, on a subject matter. So it's fascinating uh, dynamic to be in uh, with one's audience. Um, so love him, hate him, like him, dislike him. Is he new to you? Let me know what you've uh, thought of Sam. Uh, look forward to hearing from you.